Hey guys, welcome back to Sky Talks Trading. I am your host, Sky, and I'm on a quest to invest. And today we're going to be talking about everybody's favorite stock, SoFi stock. And then, you know, a little bit of general stock market news at the end. A lot of people are wondering what the future holds for SoFi stock. Is it still a buy? Is it a hold? What's happening? And while I do not have a crystal ball, and I am not a financial advisor, I'm still going to talk about it. I think there's a lot of bright things ahead for SoFi. You know, they've really carved a very nice niche in the industry and are one of the top fintech companies today. SoFi is constantly taking steps to advance across new markets and increase revenue. SoFi stock may not be able to reflect the potential of the company, but it certainly looks undervalued uh, if you take into account all of the expected future growth. You know, it definitely has massive potential. Uh, the company recently reported the fourth quarter results and they were very impressive, but I covered all that in my last video. And they had a 12% rise in last week, but quickly gave those gains back to fall to $10 and is down more than 35% so far in 2021. Like I say, I'm very hopeful for the future. You know, We've got the expansion opportunity through the Technices deal. Uh, SoFi agreed to purchase Technices in an all-stock deal worth $1.1 billion. And it's a cloud-based banking platform that can benefit SoFi's business significantly. The deal will close in the coming quarter and the agreement will help SoFi achieve its goal of becoming a one-stop shop for all financial services. That's really what it is aiming to be. Um, you know, the only app that you need on your phone to manage all of your finances. And they're well on their way to do that. I mean, think of the power that would have and how they could just beat out anybody. SoFi stock should definitely be on, on everybody's radar as a disruptive company that just got lumped in with a lot of other fintech stocks that have been killed. And now that SoFi is trading below $10 per share, there's a very attractive upside in this stock. I don't actually understand why it's as low as it is. A lot of the selling going on right now with SoFi stock has nothing to do with the fundamentals of the company. Instead, it's more about the amount of people that are seeking redemptions from the institutions invested in the name. But we have to talk about the news that everyone is talking about. Another very, very bullish sign is that SoFi CEO has bought 15,350 shares at $9.72 with his own money. He is quite literally putting his money where his mouth is. Uh, he now has accumulated over 30,000 since Friday. Uh, so I don't have to tell you, this is a huge bullish indicator. When CEOs start buying their own company's shares with their own money, very big bullish indicator. So yeah, I truly believe that SoFi stock can rebound further after this uh, short-term dip. You know, in the short run, prices could make a bounce to the $16 area. But ideally, you know, it'd be good to see SoFi trade sideways and build a good base that could support a sustained advance. SoFi trading volume has been heavy since the middle of January, suggesting some change in ownership from uh, weak hands to stronger hands, you know, from paper hands to diamond hands, if you will. The on-balance volume, the OBV line, is still in a decline from November, telling us that sellers of SoFi were more aggressive than buyers, as well as that the 12-day price momentum study shows higher lows from early December, even as price made lower lows. This is a bullish divergence, and it tells us that the pace of the decline has slowed from December. And, you know, oftentimes bullish divergences can foreshadow price rallies. Overall, the SoFi charts do suggest a stronger rebound in the near term, but a short term dip is possible before renewed gains. So in other stock market news, Aston Martin and British Vault are in partnership. Uh, so the racing car maker Aston Martin and British Vault have entered a joint development deal to build Aston Martin's first fully electric model. And that'll be um, made before 2025. Uh, this is British Vault's second auto deal this year after having secured a deal with Lotus in January. So yeah, British Vault, uh, they're a UK-based battery maker. This move will boost efforts in fundraising. British Vault lined up £1.7 billion of private funding in January with backing from the government. The company is building battery technology designed to eliminate typical power loss in current models. So that is pretty cool. Uh, let's talk about Amazon stock really quick. Amazon 
shares are trading lower. They were trading lower on Monday among the broader technology sector, while the Russia-Ukraine conflict continues to escalate with attempts of a ceasefire and the Mariupol evacuation failing. If we look at the Amazon chart analysis, the stock recently saw a break below the higher low support trend line in what traders call an ascending triangle pattern. Uh, the stock then went to retest this trend line and was unable to break back above it, holding it as an area of resistance. And this does hint at more bearish movements that may come in the future. The stock trades below both the 50-day moving average and the 200-day moving average. Uh, this indicates bearish sentiments. And when it comes to the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, that has also been falling lower in the past couple of weeks. So it is nearing oversold, you know, the oversold region. So what is next for Amazon? Amazon is seeing a period of bearish movement and it is likely continue until that RSA until that RSI can climb away from the oversold region and more buyers enter the stock once again. I mean, it's Amazon. It's never going to disappear, is it? So that is all for today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're liking the content so far. Until next time, I hope you guys have an awesome day.